Remember to subscribe to Game & Hunt Digimag. Go to gameandhuntdigimag.co.za Our interactive online magazine where you can click, scroll and watch videos. Available on all devices. Welcome to this week's program. I talk to well-known auctioneer Brandon Lear about innovative ways of hosting auctions. I also chat to our hunting editor, Stefan Fouchier. So we spoke to well-known auctioneer in the industry, Brandon Lee, about three weeks ago, and I have him on the line again today. Brandon, thank you for your time. Brandon, thanks very much. Thanks for having me again. So in this lockdown period, you had um, the Rob Call Wiener auction, and this is, as they call it, a video catalog internet auction, where they make use of a special system, and they make use of different technology and different platforms. Firstly, I just want you to describe this type of auction to our viewers. Verona, yes, very interesting. It's, uh, we've been using this technology in uh, cattle auctions for the last year or so, and uh, with, with great success. Um, really what it's about is it's a live webcast. So whereby I'll be, you know, auctioning live um, at a venue and, um, and they come in and they put up this live webcast. So the feed goes through, um, through to obviously an online platform where you will see me as the auctioneer auctioning. And um, in, most, in most cases, you will see either the cattle in the ring in front of me or otherwise small videos at the bottom of the screen and so on. And um, you, you then can a bit, bit accordingly. So as I increase my increments, so uh, the people working with the, uh, the webcast, um, putting those increments, etc. So you not only see and hear the auctioneer and see videos, etc. or see the cattle, you also can see the prices and the increments, you know, um, going up as well. So you can bid accordingly. Um, so that gives it a nice, a very nice live feel. And uh, we've had you know, tremendous uh, success with that system over the last year or so. And um, this specific auction, was it successful? And I know there were others like it in this lockdown time. How did they do? Verona, yes. So, so the auctions that I've done under the system have all um, really been successful, uh, not only because of the live factor, but also because it's, it's enabled buyers that couldn't make it uh, uh, to bid actively. Um, in this case, obviously with lockdown, it was more significant. So to give you an example, I mean, this was a, um, an auction down in the Eastern Cape. Uh, we had it at the Car Road uh, Farmers Hall, uh, which is a very t small little place down in the Eastern Cape. There were, I think, 18 people in total mm -hmm. at the venue. It was a very small venue, a very inexpensive venue. And um, yeah, so that, that's with, I think, the 1,200 or 400 calves, and the turnover was in excess of, of seven, 7 million rand in, in 45 minutes. Uh, and more than half the uh, animals that were, were purchased on the day were, were bought by people that were bidding online. So that was a huge success. And then last week um, up in the Free State was a, a very special uh, bull, Bonsmara bull auction, uh, which, which was held in similar fashion. And in fact, uh, because of the lockdown and obviously only 50 people there, and very strict protocols being followed by all of us during these, um, these times. Uh, they, uh, I, th I think it was also just over 50% of the bulls were sold online. And in fact, he averaged 10% higher this year than he did last year with no lockdown. So it's been a resounding success wherever it's been used. Wow, that, that is, that's really incredible. Um, and you, you, you spoke about the strict um, uh, regulations that you, that you adhere to during the auction as well. It's, it's like a, it's your typical pandemic auction that you can actually, you know, you can call it that because what are the type of restrictions that you, uh, or the regulations that you adhere to when in, in the uh, hall? Yes, so, so the social distancing, uh, distancing we, we have to adhere to, and of course your masks and uh, your sanitizers, etc. So everything's uh, 
in, in place. Uh, that particular one, very obviously so, we were 30 meters from the, the local police station and they were interested but didn't get close to watching because they heard the auction on the go. So yeah, you know, and no one's really had an issue. There are protocols which one has to just follow and the amount of people that are allowed at venues. And if there's uh, more people that, that, that arrive that would like to enter and participate in the auction, they actually have to just stand and wait outside until someone removes himself from the bidding um, area and then one or two more people can go in depending on how many leave. So yeah, it's very strict and, but everybody, it's, 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 it's quite interesting how, how all the farmers and everybody involved are very quickly become accustomed to, to what they need to do and, and respect that, you know. Yes, yes, definitely. Do you think this type of system will work for the game industry as it did for the cattle industry? Verona, I've, I've no doubt um, that, it, that it would work in the game industry. It's been so successful in, 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 our, in our livestock industry. So to give you an example, you know, if we look at our game auctions traditionally over the last um, five, six, eight years, um, we've had lots of people attending the live auctions. Um, they obviously, you know, cannot, cannot do that now. So what this system enables you is, is to actually sit at home and, um, and, and have a look from, from remotely at, at, and being part of a, of a live auction, you know, because it is visual. That's the, that's the huge thing about this is that it is actually visual and you can sit and from, your, from your home, the comfort of your home, wherever you are, and, and watch that. Um, I find that in the, uh, in the live auctions in the game industry as well is that a lot of our buyers use this platform, use the live auctions mm -hmm. um, for marketing. You know, they, they're seeing uh, colleagues, they're seeing friends, they're seeing people that have bought from him in the past. And what I do as an auctioneer is I like to mention the buyer's name after they've bought. And in most cases, if I can see one or two underbidders, I also like to mention their names just so that they can get those uh, accolades and recognition from doing that. Now, with only an, a, a few people being allowed at auctions, this system enables me to do that um, because you can hear very clearly um, when you're sitting at home my voice. You can also obviously see the, the increments, etc. But you can hear me very clearly. So I would say thank you very much indeed, sir, whatever your name might be for buying. Let's call it um, a lovely Springbuck Ram or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. So this, this uh, webcast allows for that. You know, and, and, and I would like to, you know, expand on that a little bit more and to say that, you know, there are four um, opportunities for bidding on, on this, uh, in this system. Mm -hmm. So you've obviously got the live, um, the live component. Uh, it's 50 people at the moment. So uh, it may be more going later on into the year. Okay. We've still got telephone bidding because it's a live auction. Mm -hmm. um, we've got proxy bidding, uh, which means people phone in and say, please buy me X, X and X on my behalf. And then, of course, you've also got the online opportunity. So that's four opportunities that you have with this webcast system where there's no other platform available at the moment that can come anywhere close to offering, affording buyers those opportunities um, to, to, to bid. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, well, you, you, you say that the buyers are bidding against the buyers on the Internet in real time. This happens in real time. So how do you get the buyers excited on the Internet as excited as the guys in the hall? Verona, so what has been an unbelievable challenge to try and get a, um, a camera excited because I've got to look at the camera excited. So it has been very interesting and I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed the challenge. It really has been exciting. Um, so what I've done, you know, over the last while is um, I, I study the buyers the night before. Uh, the auction because uh, because through the system you actually register online if you're going to bid online and so I get a very good idea I know exactly who has registered and so on um, I also do know then more or less what um, each of those buyers are looking for uh, in terms of quality and etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, and in some cases I might even phone one or two and just you know find get an idea of what they're wanting so when I get to a particular lot, I've got an idea of which buyers or buyers are looking for that lot. Um, and so what happened last week was quite interesting. A good friend of mine up in the Natal Midlands was looking for a certain uh, type of animal. And when this lot came up or those lots came up, I'd, uh, I'd call his name and say, you know, Pete, this is, uh, this is certainly could suit your system and uh, whether it worked or not, I'd, I think it did because I did check with a couple of guys. But as soon as I said that, 
um, I got a bid uh, from the uh, from the chaps who you know who run the uh, the webcast. Uh, similarly, you've got a strategy when I'm auctioning on a live hall. I will use certain things, uh, trades, uh, secret trades, whatever, yep. um, to to get guys um, bidding, and uh, and it's a very similar thing there. So I've become accustomed to that. It's and it's very challenging but very exciting. I must yep. say. Yo, how how interesting is that, hey? Um, but yeah, you have to adapt to the to the times as well and our situation. I think that's awesome. Um, the other thing, do you think this will be the norm for for the months to come and maybe year to come? You know, we don't know what's going to happen. Uh, what do you think, Rona? I, I certainly do believe that. I think what is what lockdown has done is 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 it's expedited this um, this technology and, and process. We were going that route when we seen the digital platforms, you know, um, coming uh, and, and being part of a lot of our auctions. Um, so I do see it. If, if I take the auctions that I've conducted, you know, with with the system in place before lockdown, and the success, all of those <clears throat> sellers without doubt going to continue with the system, even if they can, uh, you know, have a full complement of, of potential buyers that, that uh, can come to the, to the live auction. So I, I have no doubt that this is going to be, uh, be part of the system, part of the, the live auction and running parallel with, with the live auction going forward. I think it's here to stay forever. Yes, yes. And then, of course, this type of system do has its, you know, its pros and cons. Um, for instance, I know that you, you do need quite a, a good internet connection. There are th certain things that you need to take into consideration. Can you just elaborate for us on that? Yeah, so let's look at the cons, um, Verona. To me, I think there's pretty much only one, and, and you've hit the nail on the head there. Um, and that it's, that's um, your, your digital platform. We, we, we're working with technology. It doesn't matter how good your system is, whatever that system may be, we are going to be susceptible to problems with technology. It's, been, it's happened in the past and it'll, it'll happen in the future. So that's, but, but you know, the, the guys are working on these things and, and I'm sure it'll just get better and better. So that's the only real negative that I, that I see. Um, in terms of the, um, the pros, well, I, I think I've mentioned a lot of them, but I just think it's so exciting that you can actually sit remotely mm -hmm. and, um, and you can bid from anywhere in the world. Um, I think it's, you can hear the auction here, you can feel, get the experience of it. And um, I think it just, just brings life back to, um, let's call it a, a digital, digital platform. I found, um, you know, in, in where I do a lot of cattle auctions, in sort of the July, August, September uh, part of the year, all over um, the country, that's a very, very dangerous time in terms of fires, etc., for for our farmers. So um, you, you know, we'll wake up and we we worry about every auction every morning. If there's big wind, we know that there's going to be a certain percentage of farmers, particularly if they're far away away, won't come in case there's a fire on the farm. So um, yeah, he can stay at home. You know, he can, if there's a big wind, he doesn't have to come. He can still be part of the auction and, uh, and, and bid remotely. So it gives him access, a farmer who buys lots of cattle and let's just say a farmer that buys a lot of game. And, uh, you know, as I said, it worked tremendously with the game scenario as well. Yeah. You, can, you can bid on five auctions a week without having to get in, in a car, uh, go anywhere. Um, and so it's saving you a lot of time and cost, which other platforms are obviously do the same. But again, I say the huge... The huge positive here is that it's visual, it's live. You, you're part of the you part of the whole thing. So, um, I, I just think that it's very very exciting to run in parallel with the live auction. Yeah, I think this is definitely the way to go. Um, it's the best of both worlds, like like you also said. Um, well, uh, you know what? For more information, I think they can go to your website and, and just uh, contact you as well. That, that is brandonlear.co.za. And of course, they can go and download your um, your new app, the Brandon Lear app. Um, it's available on Android and on um, uh, Apple devices. And um, thank you for your time once again, Brandon. Rona, thanks very much. Always nice chatting to you. And and uh, just a personal word of thanks to to you and the team at Wilton Yak for the uh, tremendous effort that you put into our industry. We really do appreciate it. Lovely to wake up in the morning and read your digimags and so on. So thanks to you. Oh, no, it's a, it's a big, big pleasure. Stay well. Have a good day. Cheers. Daardier baie onsekerheid oor vlak vierse regulaties vir jag. Stefan Fushio, ons jagredakteer, gesels met ons daar oor vanuit die Pretoria Atelier.
Ja, maar nou, ik zit hier in ons uh, atelier in Pretoria en ik zit hier op jouw plek, zoals we het allemaal kan zien. En dan zien we als die kat weg is, die meest baas. So, uh, ja, dankie, ek wil gauw commentaar lever op. Um, die vraag kom in van alle oorde en rarig, allemaal word gebombardeer. Ons word gebombardeer, uh, die jachtersverenigings, skietorganisaties, die wildbedrijf, allemaal, allemaal wil weet, jy weet wanneer gaan ons jag. En ek, ek dink, ek dink is belangrijk om het te adresseer, die minister het uit die aard van die zaak, zoals ons weet, um, jag ingesluit in die, in die, in die vlak vier uh, inperkinge, soos wat onze tans tot vanavond nog um, ervaar, een uh, ou mag jag, een ou mag jag, maar daar is nog baie onduidelijkheid, en ek wil het graag, ek wil graag gauw terug gaan na wat ons hoofredakteur Henny van de Wald gister in een brief uitgestuur het. In die meeste gevallen is die verschillende provincies verantwoordelijk om die regulaties te implementeren. Om het net gauw terug te vat, die minister het met verskye rolspelers in die bedrijf, het sy op die aard van die zaak um, sekere regulaties en goeders uit ingezet om te sê, maar dit is wat gaan verwacht word van die jachter zelf. en dit is wat gaan verwacht word van die jachtondernemer, jachtplaas of die, of die wildboer of wat ook al jy dit wil noem. En daarom die regering met sy onderscheide departementen nadat hulle die kommentare in acht geneem het, eerst met elke provincie die reconsulteer. Als die directieven na hierdie consultatieproces met die verschillende provincies dier die nationale departementen zijn rechtsafdeling goedgekeerd word, moet het verwijs worden naar die nationale economische en rechtscommittees vir finale goedkeuring. Eerst daarna, en als allemaal tevrede is, kan die regulaties en directieven gepubliceerd worden in die staatskorant. Het is baie duidelijk dat ons moet wachten vir finale uitklaring van die specifieke ministers af, die oomlik as die uitklaring daar is in die staatskoerant gepubliceer word, sal Wild en Jag definitief een van die eerste bronnen op sociale media wees om vir jou die correcte inlichting deur te gee. Ek wil weer vraag, asjeblief jylle, bly binnen die regulaties, bly binnen wat vir ons voorgeskryf is op die verskillende vlakke van hierdie inperking. Moe nie die wet taart nie, moe nie die wet stoepassers taart nie, om nog een dag of twee of een week of twee vast te buit, om binnen die regulaties en binnen jou volste recht te gaan mag jag, dit sal die moeite waard wees om daai bykie te wag. Waarom nou in die tussentijd is ons game en aan Digimac, wat die my maand uitgave dek, beskikbaar op uh, sociale media, en uh, die juni uitgave kan ek vir julle met 99% zekerheid sê, gaan op sy plek op winkel rakke en gedrukte kopie wees. So sterkte daar by jou, sterkte van allemaal daar buiten en blijf veilig. Ons kyk wat wacht op die kalender. Ons sal jou in kennis stel van enige veranderinge weens die huidige COVID-19 pandemie. The Rainer de Toy Ray Game Production Auction will be hosted online on 8 and 9 May. Silent Valley Stud Game Breeders are also postponing their auction to next year 8 May 2021. Please take note that the Bona Bona Game Breeders 4th Platinum Auction has been postponed until further notice. Remember the Summit Wildlife Auction 26 September in Graaf Renet. Are you subscribed to our daily newsletter yet? Go to gameandhuntdaily.co.za and get all the latest news every morning at 6 in your mailbox. Stay safe and stay healthy. Till next week, goodbye. Remember to subscribe to Game & Hunt Digimag. Go to gameandhuntdigimag.co.za Our interactive online magazine where you can click, scroll and watch videos. Available on all devices.